pterosaurs were flying reptiles. They have often been called dinosaurs in the past, but this is untrue. They were related to dinosaurs, but weren't technically dinosaurs, as they evolved on a separate branch of the evolutionary reptile tree. After insects, they were the second group of animals to have evolved the use of powered flight, flapping their wings to propel them in the air, rather than just gliding or leaping from a height. They were a diverse group of reptiles. Some were as large as a fighter jet, and others as small as a paper airplane. Wingspans ranged from 25 centimeters, or 10 inches, to 11 meters, or 36 feet. The success of this group of animals is shown by the length of the time they existed on the planet. They span most of the Mesozoic era, which encompassed the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods from 228 to 66 million years ago. You would be forgiven for believing that today's birds descended from pterosaurs as they shared similar behavior. However, despite living during the period and taking to the skies, modern-day birds did not descend from pterosaurs. Instead, they evolved from terrestrial, feathered dinosaurs. Today we ask the question, could pterosaurs survive nowadays? Firstly, let's look at the pterosaurs in a bit more detail to find out if they could survive on today's planet. The pterosaurs can be split into two distinct groups. The basal pterosaurs were the more primitive type of flying reptile. They were the first to appear during the late Triassic and were relatively small compared to their giant descendants. The wingspans of these smaller pterosaurs generally did not exceed 2.5 meters. These wings comprised a membrane that connected their hind legs to an extensively long fourth finger on their forelimbs. Because of this membrane, it used to be thought that they were poor at moving along the ground. However, new evidence in the form of fossilized footprints or tracks has revealed that these flying reptiles were good at walking and may have even chased after small animals along the ground when hunting for food. They walked efficiently on all fours despite their back legs being hampered by the membrane that formed their wings. They had claws which would have made them expert climbers and it is believed that they may have spent a significant amount of time in trees when they weren't flying. These smaller basal pterosaurs had long tails and teeth inside their mouths. They were expert flyers and caught insects on the wing, as well as small vertebrates, which they plucked from the ground as they swooped down low. Some of the larger basal pterosaurs had needle-like teeth, which helped them grip onto the fish they caught from the sea. Others were specialists in eating beetles, and some behaved like today's insectivorous bats, flitting through the darkness of night and catching an array of insects in the air. Most of these primitive pterosaurs, however, had become extinct by the end of the Jurassic period, but the larger species were thriving and dominated the skies. These more advanced pterosaurs were called pterodactyloids and evolved to be very large. The largest known was called Quetzalcoatlus. It stood at 3.6 meters, or 12 feet tall, and had a wingspan of 12 meters, or 40 feet. It was the largest animal ever to grace the skies. These larger pterosaurs developed toothless jaws, short tails, and well-developed crests on their heads, which they used for display purposes. The diets of these flying reptiles appeared to be enormously varied. Many of the larger specimens were thought to have been mostly piscivorous, diving into the water to catch fish. However, recent analysis on teeth microware shows that some species primarily fed on carrion and terrestrial vertebrates. By studying the shape of the pterosaur's beaks and the structure of their wings, scientists have been able to determine the specialized diet for some of the more advanced pterodactylids. Those with shorter, more robust wings were fish eaters and able to dive or swim underwater to catch their prey. Some were dip feeders, like today's frigate birds. Others were more like cormorants and dived into fresh water, and others, like gannets, were plunge divers, dropping from a great height and plunging below the surface of the ocean in the pursuit of fish. Other piscivorous pterosaurs included pterodostro, which was a filter feeder like today's flamingos. It used its tiny teeth to sift out small invertebrates from the shallow water. The non-piscivorous pterosaurs were also adapted to consume a variety of different foods, some were omnivorous and supplemented seeds and berries with insects flying through the air. Others had powerful jaws and bite forces, which allowed them to crack open mollusks or capture medium-sized dinosaurs. And some called Ashdarkidae, 
were like today's ground hornbills and storks, forming the ground for any terrestrial vertebrate that they could swallow whole. Looking at the pterosaurs' diets and feeding techniques, they are so similar to some of today's birds that it's hard to imagine them struggling to find food nowadays. Although there would inevitably be competition from today's birds that have filled those niches, we believe that based on diet alone, pterosaurs could survive nowadays. But what about the habitat and climate they were used to? The Mesozoic Era, during which the pterosaurs lived, was a period of huge geological change. The supercontinent Pangaea broke up, splitting into the continents we are familiar with today. There was a huge amount of seafloor spreading, which altered the sea levels. This had a knock-on effect, changing the climate of the Earth's land masses. The deserts that once covered a large area in the center of Pangaea retreated, and greenery spread across the land. Humidity increased as the sea levels rose and surrounded more of the land. There were a few plants that we are familiar with today. The grasses only emerged towards the end of the era, and the landscape was mostly dominated by non-flowering plants, such as conifers and cycads. However, being omnivorous, carnivorous, and piscivorous, the pterosaurs would find the small vertebrates, flying insects, and fish that they used to feed on still around today. They would have been used to a much warmer climate, however. The external temperature may have been essential in their flying activities, which could mean today's lower temperatures would be prohibitive. But living nearer the equator and in some of today's hotter countries may enable them to survive. There is also the question of oxygen. Conflicting studies surround the debate regarding the atmosphere during the Mesozoic. Some suggest that there were lower levels of oxygen, whilst others suggest oxygen concentrations were higher than today. Being adapted to a higher oxygen environment would make moving to lower levels difficult to cope with. But if the reverse is true, the pterosaurs, being used to less oxygen, could thrive in the higher oxygen levels of today. So in conclusion, we believe that pterosaurs could survive today as long as they could find their own niche in the right climate. There would be no doubt that introducing pterosaurs into today's ecosystem would cause a stir. Although many of the pterosaur species seem like they would fit into the niches occupied by today's birds, they would bring a whole other level of competition. Those relying solely on fish for their diet would, like many of today's seabirds, face dwindling fish stocks, marine pollution, and conflict with humans. The smaller, more primitive species may survive on insects like some of today's bat species, and others could hunt small vertebrates in the warmer parts of the world. So, why did pterosaurs become extinct in the first place, especially whilst the flying dinosaurs, known to us as birds, survived? Recent evidence suggests that pterosaurs were, in fact, doing quite well towards the end of the Cretaceous period. Just before the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, their numbers weren't dwindling as was first thought. Instead, they were thriving. But when the meteor hit, they too met their doom. Scientists now believe that this could have been due to their size. Although pterosaurs began their evolutionary journey as small, bird-sized reptiles, these died out before the end of the Mesozoic, and the later species grew into enormous reptiles. Even the smallest of these had wingspans over 2 meters or 6 feet. During the mass extinction, only the small animals survived. Nothing over 25 kilograms or 55 pounds made it past the Cretaceous period. Birds, in comparison to pterosaurs, were very small. Their size was likely inhibited by the presence and competition from the pterosaurs. This means that the pterosaurs inadvertently caused the birds to survive mass extinction where they themselves could not. Furthermore, birds could rely on plant life to survive, while pterosaurs needed to hunt to eat. It is incredible to think that today's birds have survived since the Mesozoic era and even made it through the mass extinction when some of Earth's most fearsome predators could not. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.